guys and welcome back to another video. I'm really, really, really excited to film this one because I don't think I've spoke about this in ages or I haven't done a video like this in years and I'm going to talk all about post-camp travels and traveling after camp, planning it, how much I've spent in the past, how much I'm spending and what I'm planning on doing this year after camp and just kind of give you a brief overview of post-camp travels because it's a thing that I think worries a lot of people is getting to camp not knowing anyone then having to find people to travel with then having to book it then having to pay for it having to sort it and organize it so hopefully this helps and gives you an idea of how i've done it how i'm doing it this year and yeah i'm really excited this year's travels guys i am beyond excited to one travel and do it with all the amazing people that i'm doing it with and two vlog it and literally capture all the memories of doing it because honestly that makes me so emotional but what i'm going to just start with i'm going to get up my summer camp guidebook if you haven't got this actually i'm going to leave the link to it down below because i wrote a guidebook a couple of years ago all about things to do with camp it's over 50 pages long and it's got so much information about things to do with camp and there's a big section at the end about traveling so i'm going to go down to that section and just kind of go through only because like i'm going to forget amount and i put all the pricing in here so it's good that i can just pull from this and give you an idea um so this was my 2022 post camp travels i have only ever traveled after camp once like properly my first two summers i flew straight home after camp finished 2022 i did a big like month long travel and it was absolutely unbelievable and then last year i flew straight home this year i'm doing some traveling so i've kind of like done a bit of both it completely depends it's completely up to you what you decide to do post camp um there's no right or wrong option there's no right or wrong thing to do it kind of will depend on what you want to do if there's loads of places you want to see in the states or if you think you just want to do camp and go home then maybe do traveling another year there's no right or wrong option to with anything to do post camp travel a big question i've been asked at the moment though is about booking return flights so for me personally i've always booked a return flight it works out cheaper it works out easier and it means that i know where i need to finish i know that when i've got a flight back from new york on this date i know i have to end up there and it's quite nice that it gives me that to organize and i think i would be really stressed personally having to sort all my post camp travel and then book a flight home i think that would be just that would just be stepping over the line so i've always booked a return flight and it's something that i personally do advise to do you'll save a lot of money and it's nice to know where you're going to base and it's also good to have a return flight sorted for when you enter the us as like proof of leaving the country i've never been asked for that but it's always i just quite like having it and knowing that i'm going to leave when i am so let's talk 2022 post camp travels i had nothing planned 2022 i knew i was going to travel i booked a flight home i want to say for about just under four weeks after my camp finished and i had no idea who i was going to go with no idea where i wanted to go and it was just a completely open plan like i had nothing set in place and i met the most incredible people in 2022 and i traveled with a group of i want to say about 12 people and i only knew one of them i knew sally and i'd known sally from 2019 everyone else i didn't know before that summer started and we had the best time like genuinely it was unbelievable so it was probably around three weeks to the end of camp that a group of us sat down and started deciding where we wanted to go we started booking things booking flights accommodation i think we only had our first place booked and sorted first two i think so we actually went to new york straight after camp finished that's kind of the norm for my camp anyway because we're in pennsylvania new york's like our nearest big city and nearest airports so we decided to spend two nights in new york we stayed at the windsor hotel in lower manhattan and this was a really good location i remember it was like a different part of new york that i'd never really explored before and it was such a cool place so many cool bars and restaurants and cafes and shops and stuff um this hotel cost 50 pound each for two nights which i think was a bargain bear in mind i mean this was only two years ago but prices have changed obviously things are always getting more expensive so to bear this in mind um we spent very little on taxis and trains when we were in new york because the things we ended up doing were just in lower manhattan i don't think we went to times square i don't think we ventured out we stayed kind of like local which was nice we did have quite a big night out but other than that we didn't spend too much money so spending in new york was quite low that's not to say that it will be in general new york is a very expensive place food is expensive drinks are expensive activities different things so something to bear in mind but for us we didn't do too much touristy like exploring then we flew to new orleans i loved new orleans guys it was such a cool spot it was very hot bear in mind if you want to go to new orleans after camp in august it's so hot i've never been anywhere that was as hot as it was um the flight from new the flight from new york to new orleans cost 70 pound and we stayed in a hostel here 
I, <laughs> we had so many mixed opinions on this hostel, guys. Summer absolutely hated this hostel. I'm gonna insert, sorry, I'm moving around. I'm gonna insert a picture of us in this hostel. A friend of ours recommended us to stay there and location wise, it was perfect. It had a pool, which was something that most hostels in New Orleans that we found didn't have. And with how hot it was, we knew we needed a pool. So we stayed at India House Hostel and it was 90 pound for four nights. So it was really cheap. I would personally, if I was going back to New Orleans, I'd stay in a nicer hotel. Um, just because like the rooms were tiny, it didn't feel the cleanest. Um, the pool area was nice to have, but it wasn't a great pool. So something to bear in mind, it was really fun. There was about 18 of us that stayed there and we had such a good time. Um, but yeah, maybe like balance between hostels and hotels. I'm doing just hotels this year, but I'll touch on that after. Um, transport from hostels to the bars and restaurants was slightly more expensive, but because there was a big group of us, we were just splitting all the Ubers and stuff, so it wasn't too bad. Eating and drinking out, we definitely spent a lot of money. Um, and on the last day, me and Summer did some like exploring and hit like actual touristy bits. We did the aquarium, we did some shopping, we just wandered around. And yeah, I highly recommend doing that because, because it was so hot, a lot of us just wanted to lie by the pool, which we could have done but we ended up going out and we saw parts of new orleans that were really nice to go and see in the day and actually just have a wander so definitely something to do if you're in new orleans then we went to la la is my favorite destination on this trip and i think in america in general i love la so so much and um, we flew from new orleans to la and this was about 100 pounds for the flight this part of the trip is where our group split into like three different groups so me and Summer stayed in a hostel on Hollywood Boulevard and I loved this hostel. Summer wasn't too keen on it. It was a bit of a weird space, but location wise, it was absolutely unbelievable. Sally and Meg tried to book into this hostel and couldn't. So they ended up staying out by the airport. But this hostel was £150 for three nights and it was one of those like pod chairs and it was really good, but the setup was a bit weird. It was just like a room off the side of the road. There was no like lobby. There was no like entry room into different rooms it was just one big room like a loft space almost like right off the main road it was a bit that was the only thing that was a bit strange transport here was so expensive in LA guys please bear in mind that location is going to be key in a lot of these places Ubers are so expensive in the states and oh, obviously anywhere but depending on the group of people like how many you're staying with as well that can bump up the price there was only me and Summer for a few of the things we did in LA and our Uber from LAX to our hostel was about just under $100. So with only two of you, that ends up being quite expensive. So bear those things in mind. But we did some things that didn't cost anything. Like we hiked the Runyon Canyon for for sunrise. And then we just wandered around, obviously going to like Be Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive. Like those things don't cost loads. So definitely try and factor those kind of things in when you're traveling. And then on the Sunday, four of us went to Universal and the tickets were about $100. And then one of Meg's family friends invited us to <laughs> his house in the Hollywood Hills. This was one of my peaks in my life. Genuinely, this was, I'm gonna insert a picture of us literally out at his pool in the hot tub with the Hollywood sign behind us. It was absolutely unbelievable. And then we, so we did three, six nights in total in LA, three nights in the hostel in Hollywood. And then we all moved back to a big hotel where like 14 of us stayed. And here we paid 130 pound for three nights, but it was a gorgeous Marriott hotel. Like we had a free upgrade, gorgeous pool. Like we needed a bit of luxury then. So that was really nice. Then we decided to get the bus from LA to San Diego and it was about $14, which was so good. Took about two and a half hours. And then the hotel we stayed at was about 10 minutes from the beach and we paid 120 pound for four nights. So that was a really good price to be fair. It wasn't an amazing hotel. It was more like a motel. Um, and I was really ill in San Diego. Like I think camp and the summer had just caught up to me and I was literally felt like I was dying then I actually recovered by the time we went to Vegas and this was the last stop on our trip as like the big group of us we stayed at the Circus Circus Hotel which cost 80 pound for three nights it was so cheap and um, the flight from San Diego to Vegas was about 19 dollars and we had to add on baggage which I think was about an extra 40 35 40 dollars I think costs in Vegas were obviously our highest on the trip just because of Vegas as a whole but because our accommodation was so cheap and we were staying on the strip we didn't really pay for Ubers I think we got an Uber once like up to the other end of the strip because it's actually a lot further than it looks um but obviously drinking and eating out that was like our highest cost of the trip then I actually ended up flying back to New York from Vegas to meet my mom and yeah she was flying out from home we, we we did New York for three nights I think and then we went to Atlantic City which was really cool somewhere to definitely think about adding onto your list if you want to experience like a mini Vegas it was really really cool so in total on flights and buses obviously internally I spent 444 pounds and total on accommodation was 1070 pounds that's obviously what I'd done in the past that's sorted 
spending wise i could not tell you how much i spent i also wouldn't want to know how much i spent because ubers and food and drinking and just like eating at activities different things definitely builds up so something to bear in mind that's where most of your budget will go actually like accommodation and travel like transport is actually really cheap and really easy to do but it's definitely going to be your little activities and taxis taxis are so expensive and it's because public transport i don't find is very easy to use in the states at all unless you're in a big city where you can use the subway but buses are like really hard to use we didn't find many trains in other like states so something to bear in mind but that's kind of how much i've spent in the past on that and yeah literally had the best time and like i say had no plans before going did it with a whole new group of people um but i'm going to talk about this summer as well now travel wise what i'm doing this summer so i've done it completely differently i have booked and planned and paid for this all in advance this is all sorted before actually going which for me i'm really excited for it was a little bit stressful doing it in 2022 sometimes we would be going to a new place and had nowhere to stay the next day and that freaks me out like i do not do well with those kind of things obviously that was our own fault we could have booked things in advance but life catches up with you when you're traveling when you're at camp it's hard to find loads of time to sit down and plan and get it all organized it's definitely possible but i much prefer doing it the way that i've done it this year so i've actually organized and i'm hosting like a west coast trip after camp and there's about 15 of us booked onto it now i think which is really exciting it's all been booked and planned through my travel business which i have and yeah it's a com all the accommodation and one flight i think internal flight that we're doing and i'm beyond excited like literally i think i'm more excited for this trip than i was for the one before i think because i know where i'm going i know who i'm going with it's all going to be organized and paid for before going so all the money that i have is just spending money which i think is quite nice um so to sum it up i'll try not to go into as much detail as i have with that one but we're going to new york for a night after camp finishes as kind of like i said we normally do anyway then the day after we're going to fly to nashville three nights in nashville guys i don't think you are ready to see the, the nashville content it's going to be absolutely insane and i could cry just thinking about it like honestly all i can think about is cowboy boots cowboy hats and line dancing like i could cry i could actually cry my camera also just died then so i hope i've got back to the same angle but i'm not sure it looks a bit off center so yeah new york and nashville aren't booked yet they're just kind of rough plans but that's going to be everyone from camp going it seems like a lot of people seem keen for those plans and then my west coast trip like i say that i've organized starts in san francisco so we're doing san francisco then we're going down to pismo beach then we're doing la san diego and then vegas and my plans guys have literally changed within the last 24 hours so as i mentioned i booked a return flight always have done always will do booked a return flight to go back to manchester from new york around the 31st of august i think it was and then my plan was to go out to australia literally like three or four days later please tell me why i didn't think to fly to sydney from the west coast of america that thought never crossed my mind not in a million years just thought so i had a return flight booked was just going to do that hadn't booked my flight back out to sydney but it was looking at around seven or eight hundred pound just the one way to get back out there and i just couldn't bring myself to do it and i knew there was a reason why i couldn't book it because this was fate this was meant to happen so one of my friends from camp actually also lives out in sydney and he messaged me and said no because like there's flights from hawaii <laughs> back out to sydney for 130 pounds like, are you kidding me 130 pounds and because i'm already on the west coast i'm just gonna go to hawaii so this is really rogue and really last minute i literally put it in the group chat with some of the girls who are coming on the west coast trip and a few of them were like i'm coming to like let's do hawaii and i could cry i'm so excited so the plan now is to fly from vegas to honolulu and have like a few days there five six days i don't know if it's too long if anyone's been to hawaii please let me know and if there's any other places you'd recommend staying in hawaii i have not a clue so yeah and then the plan is to fly from hawaii to sydney is that not the most exciting thing ever so now i'm actually not coming back home before going to australia but i am back home for christmas this year so i'm not gone for really really long but yeah can you believe that that that's just like changed into that plan like i'm beyond excited i feel like i've said that a million times but yeah those things so it's all the accommodation between san francisco and vegas that's all booked and the flight from san diego to vegas is sorted so there's just bits either side that i need to sort and like buses in between locations um but yeah that's the plans for this year guys and to tell you i am excited is an absolute understatement my west coast trip i think i paid just under 1100 pounds for all of the accommodation and like i said that flight 
from San Diego to Vegas and we've gone high end guys we've gone a little bit bougie I'm not gonna lie after doing my travels before and staying in some hostels and lower end motels absolutely fine but after you've been at camp for two months and you've slept on a top bunk bed all you want is a little bit of luxury you want a nice hotel bed you want a nice setup like a nice pool somewhere to chill you do want that so we've gone a little bit bougie so you can definitely do it a lot cheaper than that but for that price i thought that was brilliant for what is 11 nights accommodation and a flight in like four and five star hotels <laughs> maybe a little bit over the top but i'm so excited and everyone that i'm going with is so excited as well so yeah i actually could cry and the fact i'm gonna have my camera vlog it all literally bring you guys along with me I hope you're as excited as I am because I cannot wait. So yeah, I hope that's given you a little idea on my post-camp travels, what I've done before, what I'm doing this year. And to just go into it with an open mind, I think is my biggest tip. If you want to have little bits booked and you've maybe met some people that want to do the same thing, book some things up if you want to. If you want to keep it completely open and a completely blank canvas that's absolutely fine that's what i've done that's what a lot of people do tend to do like i say it does it does freak people out a little bit that maybe you worry about meeting people out there and having people to do stuff with but it does happen like i say i didn't know 11 out of the 12 people that i traveled with after camp so it definitely is fine and you'll definitely find people that want to do the same thing and also feel free to use my facebook group i'll put a little screenshot of it on here use my facebook group to connect with people that maybe want to travel last year it was brilliant because some people would message and say oh like i'm in chicago for two days is anyone else here like i'd love to meet up some people want to go and do those travels by themselves or just with one other person and just see who they meet so that's definitely an option as well but yeah those are my post camp travels i'm so excited if you have any questions at all travel related different things if you're interested in my west coast trip please feel free to drop me a message and i can send you over the itinerary to have a little look over but yeah get excited because camp is officially here travels are officially here i could cry but thank you so so much for watching guys and i will see you in the next video